the death of his son, the collision of the Milky Way galaxy with the Andromeda galaxy, and possibly the Big Rip. The James Webb Space Telescope has just made a mind-boggling discovery, and this is shaking up the field of astronomy. Neil deGrasse Tyson, a renowned astrophysicist, suggests that this remarkable telescope might have glimpsed something unprecedented, black holes from a previous universe that might have birthed our own. This finding challenges our most fundamental understanding of the cosmos, including the Big Bang Theory, which has long been considered the cornerstone of explaining how everything began. Could our theories have been off base all this time? Or is there a puzzle in the measurements? Join us as we explore how the Webb Telescope saw black holes of previous universe that created our universe. The Big Bang Theory's new frontier. Over the past century, scientific progress has yielded one of the most profound revelations in our understanding of the cosmos. The formulation of the hot Big Bang Theory. This captivating theory proposes that the universe, in its current form, emerged from a state that was remarkably hotter, denser, and more uniform. Initially presented as a credible alternative to conventional explanations for the expanding universe, the Big Bang Theory gained astonishing confirmation in the 1960s with the discovery of the primeval fireball, now identified as the cosmic microwave background. For over 50 years, the Big Bang Theory has stood as the preeminent explanation for our cosmic origins. It is a narrative that unfolds with an inflationary period preceding it, setting the stage for the remarkable events that shaped the universe as we know it today. However, the journey of both cosmic inflation and the Big Bang has been marked by persistent challenges posed by astronomers and astrophysicists throughout the years. The latest challenge comes in the form of revelations from the James Webb Space Telescope, which, despite being operational for less than two years, has already introduced a new layer of complexity to the cosmic narrative. The JWST's detection of early galaxies, unexpectedly more massive than previously anticipated, has sent ripples through the scientific community, posing a potential paradigm shift in our comprehension of the universe. The JWST's unveiling of these high-mass galaxies in the early universe implies a need to reevaluate our existing understanding of the cosmic framework. This discovery, while groundbreaking, does not seamlessly align with the established astronomical models that have guided our understanding thus far. The James Webb Space Telescope, in its short operational span, has raised questions that challenge the very foundations of our cosmic knowledge. It's crucial to note that the James Webb Space Telescope has quickly become an invaluable asset in unraveling the mysteries of the cosmos, offering unparalleled glimpses into the universe during its formative years, just a few hundred million years after the Big Bang. The telescope's advanced capabilities and observational prowess have provided scientists with a wealth of data, prompting a re-examination of long-standing assumptions about the early stages of our universe. The sudden revelation of these massive early galaxies has, in essence, upset the proverbial apple cart of cosmic understanding. Scientists are now faced with the realization that the James Webb Space Telescope's findings may necessitate a rewriting of the textbooks that have shaped our understanding of the universe's beginnings. This unexpected turn of events emphasizes the dynamic and evolving nature of scientific inquiry where each discovery has the potential to reshape our understanding of the cosmos, James Webb's universe-shattering discoveries. The recent discoveries made using the James Webb Space Telescope have unveiled a fascinating revelation in the depths of our universe. Scientists have identified six colossal galaxies that emerged surprisingly early in the universe's history. These galaxies, brimming with stars, possess an astonishing magnitude that has left astronomers awestruck. The universe, merely 500 to 700 million years after its colossal birth event, witnessed the emergence of galaxies that exhibited a level of maturity akin to our very own Milky Way, which is roughly 13 billion years old. These colossal entities boast an immense mass of stars reaching several billion times that of our Sun. To give you a clear comparison, our Milky Way houses a star mass equivalent to approximately 60 billion suns. Now these newly discovered galaxies surpass even this magnitude, 
with one potential behemoth holding an astronomical 100 billion times the mass of our sun. Dr. Erica Nelson, an astrophysicist from the University of Colorado Boulder and a co-author of the study, expressed her astonishment at the swift appearance of these immense entities. She highlighted the perplexity of such colossal structures forming so rapidly in the early stages of the universe a phenomenon that challenges the conventional understanding of galactic evolution. Until these recent findings, the prevailing cosmological theories suggested a slow evolution of galaxies from small clusters of stars and dust, gradually growing in size over immense periods. This concept proposed that matter in the early universe gathered at a gradual pace, gradually giving rise to the galaxies we observe today. However, these newfound colossal entities defy this narrative, raising profound questions about the accepted cosmological theories. Dr. Evol, the lead researcher, ponders how these immense galaxies seemingly took a fast track to maturity. This revelation stands as a bold challenge to established scientific beliefs, disrupting the conventional wisdom that colossal galaxies required significantly longer periods to develop. These remarkable entities are referred to informally as universe breakers, a term that aptly captures their transformative impact on our understanding of cosmic evolution. They are truly living up to their name by reshaping and challenging the very foundations of our comprehension of the universe's evolution. The implications of these discoveries are far-reaching. They force scientists to rethink and reevaluate the existing theories about how galaxies form and evolve. The rapid emergence of these colossal galaxies in the early universe challenges the timeline and mechanisms previously thought to govern cosmic evolution. Moreover, the revelations brought forth by the James Webb Space Telescope, which captures snapshots of the universe as it existed a staggering 13.5 billion years ago, open new avenues of inquiry. Scientists are now propelled into an era of exploration where they must grapple with the unexpected and revise their fundamental understanding of how the universe unfolded in its infancy, probing the depths of ancient celestial giants. Astrophysicist Emma Chapman, uninvolved in the recent study, emphasizes the potential seismic shift in our understanding of the early universe if these findings hold up under scrutiny. The existence of colossal galaxies near the Big Bang challenges the previously held belief of a dark cosmic era, suggesting that star formation might have commenced much earlier than previously presumed. However, amidst this excitement, researchers caution against rewriting the cosmological records just yet. There remains the possibility that some of these colossal entities might be obscured by supermassive black holes. What appears as starlight in the images captured by telescopes like the JWST could be gas and dust being drawn into these gravitational behemoths. Another astronomer, unaffiliated with the study, notes the mysteries surrounding the formation and growth of black holes during this early epoch. She highlights that the data doesn't necessarily contradict cosmology, but rather demands a deeper understanding of the novel physics governing black hole formation and expansion during that period. To validate these groundbreaking discoveries, researchers might turn to spectroscopy, a method that captures the spectrum of light emitted by these identified celestial objects. This approach could illuminate crucial details about their age and composition. Galaxies from the early universe exhibit significant redshifts in their light spectra, indicating that the light emitted has undergone substantial stretching on its journey through space to reach Earth. The concept of redshift in astronomy is fascinating. The higher the redshift value, the more the light has stretched, signaling greater distance and age for the observed galaxy. By employing spectroscopy, scientists aim to unveil whether these potential galaxies, labeled as high redshift candidates, are indeed as ancient as they appear. Alternatively, they might discover that these entities are intrinsically red-shifted galaxies from a more recent cosmic period, hinting at a different narrative of their formation and evolution. Spectroscopy acts as a powerful tool, allowing astronomers to decipher the chemical composition, temperature, and motion of celestial objects by analyzing the patterns within their emitted light. It's akin to unraveling the unique fingerprint of each object in space, 
By scrutinizing these colossal galaxies using spectroscopic methods, researchers aim to delve deeper into the cosmic past, unraveling the mysteries hidden within these distant celestial behemoths. The Challenge to Lambda CDM Michael Bowen, a prominent astronomer from the University of Texas at Austin, has brought forth a perspective that challenges our understanding of cosmic mass distribution. His insights, revealed in the esteemed journal Nature Astronomy, add a layer of complexity to the prevailing cosmological model known as Lambda CDM, where CDM denotes cold, dark matter. In the quest to unravel the mysteries of the universe, astronomers continuously emphasize the critical need for more observations to solidify their findings. Boan's revelations, while not conclusive, suggest a groundbreaking possibility. The identified mass implies a revelation that could redefine our comprehension of the known mass of stars during this cosmic era. Astonishingly, it might be up to 100 times greater than previously estimated. Even with the cautionary note to await further observations, the implications of this finding are profound. It prompts us to reconsider the fundamental building blocks of our understanding of the universe. Bowen emphasizes the need for a more in-depth exploration to confirm these findings. The significance lies not only in the potential confirmation of this new perspective, but also in the questioning of our current assumptions. The Lambda CDM model, a widely accepted framework in cosmology, proposes a scenario where ordinary matter and dark matter were thoroughly mixed during the early universe. According to this model, dark matter halos collapsed, giving rise to the first galaxies, and a portion of the intertwined ordinary matter transitioned into new stars. Bowen explains that we have substantial evidence of the distribution of matter in the early universe, derived from the cosmic microwave background. One of the key challenges in reconciling this model with observations lies in the efficiency of star formation. Bowen embarked on a meticulous calculation seeking to align the predicted proportion of ordinary matter that should convert into stars with the observed high-mass galaxies detected by the James Webb Space Telescope. His conclusion is staggering. Nearly every available atom would have been used in star formation during the early universe. However, Bowen stops short of considering this near 100% efficiency as plausible, stating that it borders on the impossible. Here, he draws a fascinating comparison with the modern universe, where the efficiency of star formation is estimated to be around 10%. This stark difference raises questions about the mechanisms at play during different cosmic eras and challenges our preconceived notions about the utilization of matter in the formation of stars. Mark Vogelsberger, an astrophysicist from MIT not directly involved in Bowen's study, lends support to the theoretical analysis. He commends the paper's robustness, highlighting that the calculations are grounded in minimal assumptions. According to Vogelsberger, Bowen's computations present a compelling case, indicating a need for a closer examination of our existing models. While Bowen's insights introduce a level of uncertainty into our understanding of cosmic evolution, Vogelsberger remains cautious about discarding the Lambda CDM model entirely. He underscores that, at present, no other theory matches its capabilities, making it a last resort to contemplate replacing it with an alternative framework. Exploring Early Dark Energy Models Haley Williams, spearheading a team from the University of Minnesota, has unveiled a remarkable discovery, an early galaxy that emerged a mere 500 million years after the Big Bang. Leveraging the James Webb Space Telescope, the visibility of this galaxy relies on gravitational lensing, a phenomenon amplifying its otherwise faint presence. Williams underscores the galaxy's noteworthy characteristic, a star formation rate tens of times higher than galaxies from a slightly later cosmic era. While this early galaxy exhibits intense star formation, Williams acknowledges its lower mass compared to galaxies scrutinized by Bowen Cushine, another astronomer whose work has challenged conventional assumptions. Williams, however, speculates on the potential implications of this intense star formation for higher mass galaxies at similar redshifts. The intriguing aspect of this discovery lies in the possibility of shedding light on the evolutionary trajectory of galaxies. Bowen Kuchin, maintaining a cautious stance, 
raises pertinent considerations regarding the small size of this early object. At just 105 light years across, significantly smaller than typical galaxies, he contemplates the likelihood that it might be a globular cluster instead of a galaxy. This skepticism stems from the need to critically evaluate and define the nature of celestial objects, especially those pushing the boundaries of our understanding. Addressing the tension in existing cosmological models, one proposed alternative involves modifications to the Lambda CDM model, specifically the early dark energy models. These adjustments suggest altering the behavior of dark energy immediately following the Big Bang. Such modifications aim to reconcile discrepancies related to the Hubble constant, aligning it with other observational data. Bowen Couchin delves into calculations to explore the implications of these proposed adjustments. In scenarios where additional matter is present in the early universe, the density of matter in early galaxies could significantly increase, thereby potentially reducing the necessity for hyper-efficient star formation to achieve comparable outcomes. However, these EDE models pose a challenge by suggesting a younger age for the universe, in stark contrast to the established age derived from other measurements. Another plausible resolution to the discrepancies observed in astronomical models involves the potential misattribution of some of the galaxy's light to stars. Bowen Kuchin leans toward a scenario where the detected light originates from accretion disks encircling supermassive black holes, deeming it one of the most plausible explanations. This hypothesis underscores the complexity of interpreting observational data and highlights the importance of considering diverse possibilities when analyzing celestial phenomena. Deceptive Skies in Astronomical Surveys Astronomers have caught glimpses of a few galaxies scattered across a mere quarter millionth of the sky. However, caution resonates within the scientific community, as the presence of these galaxies in such a limited portion of the heavens may not be truly representative of the entire cosmos. Joel Lea, an expert from Penn State, who was not directly involved in the research, underscores the importance of comprehensive statistical surveys to unravel the mysteries concealed within the cosmic fabric. The observed tension among astronomers raises doubts, prompting questions about the authenticity of these galaxies. Peter Berui, hailing from the University of Arizona and not affiliated with the ongoing study, highlights a crucial consideration. He points out that nearby low-mass galaxies have the potential to deceive observers by mimicking the appearance of their distant, massive counterparts. Definitive conclusions, it seems, remain elusive and hinge upon further measurements. One of the key challenges facing researchers in this cosmic endeavor is the absence of spectroscopic measurements for these enigmatic galaxies. Spectroscopy, a technique that breaks down light into its constituent wavelengths, would not only unveil the true distance of these galaxies, but also pave the way for the search for elusive signs of black holes within them. Michael Bowen Coolen, anticipating forthcoming data, asserts that within a couple of years, or perhaps even sooner, the gravity of the situation will become apparent, shedding light on the cosmic conundrum. As we await the unveiling of this pivotal data, Let's delve into the intriguing theories that astronomers are postulating to explain this phenomenon. One compelling hypothesis suggests the presence of an unknown mechanism at play. The cosmic mystery, some argue, could find resolution if we entertain the notion that massive black holes existed in the early universe. According to astronomers, this assumption would provide a plausible explanation for the appearance of massive galaxies in telescope surveys. However, a formidable challenge surfaces in the attempt to elucidate how such a multitude of black holes could have emerged in the early epochs of the universe. Here, a controversial theory put forth by a Nobel Prize winner enters the cosmic stage. This theory challenges conventional wisdom and adds a layer of complexity to our understanding of the early universe. The Nobel laureate's proposition introduces a speculative angle to the discussion leaving the scientific community both intrigued and cautious. The crux of the matter lies in the intricate interplay between theory and observation, and astronomers grapple with the task of reconciling these elements to construct a coherent narrative of the cosmos. The coming years hold the promise of resolving the cosmic quandary, 
As advancements in technology and methodology pave the way for more comprehensive surveys and detailed measurements. Penrose's Multibang Universe The prevailing theory of cosmic origins traces back approximately 14 billion years to a momentous event known as the Big Bang. This theory posits that the entire expanse of what was and what will ever be existed within an infinitely dense singularity, an inconceivably tiny point that underwent a cataclysmic expansion, birthing the vast cosmos we now observe. However, for numerous physicists, reconciling the intricate formations within our universe, such as superclusters, within a mere 13.7 billion years, seems perplexing. A physicist from the University of Oxford steps forth to challenge the conventional Big Bang model. He aims to substantiate his contentions by examining residual evidence embedded within the cosmic microwave background radiation. This radiation, a remnant from when the universe was a mere 300,000 years old, serves as a crucial piece of evidence. According to this scientist, the Big Bang might not have been the ultimate origin, but rather a singular episode within a cycle of recurring Big Bangs termed eons. Each of these cosmic events heralded a new phase in the universe's evolution. Enter Sir Roger Penrose, a Nobel laureate in physics, celebrated for his contributions to mathematical methods and insights into the enigmatic realm of black holes. Penrose proposes a paradigm-shifting concept. Our universe has undergone not just one, but multiple Big Bangs, with another slated for the future. His Nobel recognition stems from advancements in mathematical techniques that both affirmed and expanded upon Albert Einstein's general theory of relativity. Penrose's work delved into the complexities of black holes, unveiling how immensely dense objects collapse under gravitational forces, culminating in singularities, points of infinite mass. Upon accepting the prestigious prize, Penrose reiterated his unconventional theory, deeming it crazy in its audacity. He envisions a universe expanding until all matter undergoes decay, sparking a new Big Bang and birthing an entirely fresh cosmos. In an interview, Penrose confidently expressed his belief that the Big Bang wasn't the absolute starting point. Something precedes it and that something heralds its arrival in our cosmic future. But how does the physicist support his theory? termed conformal cyclic cosmology, challenging the prevalent Big Bang narrative. Penrose's concept diverges from the traditional linear notion of cosmic evolution. Conformal cyclic cosmology posits a cyclic universe, where each phase follows a sequence, a Big Bang leading to an expansive period, followed by vast cosmic expansion, then eventual decay and dissolution of all matter, culminating in the initiation of a new Big Bang and the birth of a fresh cosmos. Penrose relies on mathematical frameworks and observable phenomena to bolster his theory. The cosmic microwave background radiation, a fossilized echo of the early universe, provides crucial evidence for this cyclic cosmology. By scrutinizing these faint whispers from the universe's infancy, Penrose attempts to decode the mysteries that might reveal hints of preceding epochs and potentially forecast the trajectory of future cosmic events. Sir Roger Penrose put forth an intriguing claim regarding the existence of six distinct celestial entities termed Hawking Points. Named in honor of the late Professor Stephen Hawking, who first proposed the notion that black holes emit radiation and gradually evaporate, these points in the sky are approximately eight times larger than the diameter of the moon. These enigmatic points, if confirmed, could potentially signify the presence of such evaporating black holes, although detecting them within the current 13.77 billion year age of our universe remains improbable. Penrose's proposition suggests a profound perspective. Our universe might not be the inaugural or ultimate one. According to his theory, the universe originated from an immensely dense and highly ordered mass evolving through a series of complex processes into the intricate cosmos that we perceive today. Cycles of creation and collapse. The prevailing Big Bang model, grounded in inflation, encounters a perplexing conundrum when it comes to elucidating the presence of a low-entropy, highly ordered state at the inception of the universe. The prevailing understanding lacks a compelling rationale for such a state, 
unless events were set into motion well before the actual Big Bang, as posited by Roger Penrose's theory. According to Penrose, our universe has experienced and will once again undergo a transformation into a low entropy state as it approaches its ultimate expansion into nothingness. This cosmic journey culminates in a frigid, dark, and featureless abyss. Penrose theorizes that remnants of past universes or eons can be observed in the form of dead black holes, offering a tangible glimpse into the cyclical nature of the cosmos. This concept also aligns with Stephen Hawking's hypothesis, adding credence to the intriguing narrative painted by Penrose. In his groundbreaking 2020 paper featured in the monthly notices of the Royal Astronomical Society, Penrose presents compelling evidence in the form of anomalous circular spots discovered in the cosmic microwave background. These spots exhibit elevated temperatures, and the data supporting this revelation originated from the Planck 70 GHZ satellite. To bolster the credibility of this discovery, the data underwent validation through an exhaustive process involving approximately 10,000 simulations. The correlation identified by Penrose between radiation hotspots in the cosmic microwave background and evaporating black holes serves as a key pillar of his cyclic cosmology. In a collaborative effort with Vahi Goran in 2010, Penrose proposed a cyclic cosmological model asserting that uniform temperature rings in the CMB are a consequence of gravitational wave signatures originating from colliding black holes in a preceding universe. Black holes, as per this model, play a pivotal role in reducing entropy as the universe approaches the conclusion of its expansion. The gradual evaporation or merging of remaining black holes contributes to the restoration of order, culminating in a state resembling the primordial Big Bang and smoothing the space-time geometry from its current jagged form. Under Penrose's model, a new eon begins after the universe reaches a point where it can no longer expand and begins collapsing into a highly ordered system, thereby triggering the next Big Bang. This cyclical pattern of expansion, collapse, and rebirth forms the basis of Penrose's conformal cyclic cosmology, challenging the conventional view that the cosmic microwave background's temperature variations should be random. Now it's time for today's subscriber pick. Astrophysicist Neil deGrasse Tyson recently reported that the remarkable Webb telescope saw black holes of previous universe that created our universe. This idea aligns with Roger Penrose's proposal, which questions whether our universe is the initial or final one. He suggests it emerged from a dense mass, evolving into today's cosmos. The Big Bang theory faces a puzzle, explaining a highly ordered start without prior events. Penrose's theory suggests events preceded the Big Bang. He predicts our universe will reach a low entropy state, ending in emptiness. Past universes may exist as dead black holes, supporting cyclical cosmos. Penrose's 2020 paper highlighted anomalies in the cosmic microwave background, linked to evaporating black holes. Collaborating with Vahi Goran, he proposed a cyclic model where black holes reduce entropy, leading to a new Big Bang. His conformal cyclic cosmology suggests multiple eons, supported by WAP satellite data. Critics question a universe changing size across eons, challenging notions of matter's fundamental nature. Penrose's theory challenges convention, suggesting a cyclical, not singular, cosmic history with skeptics and unresolved queries. Let us know what you think about this proposition. Transformative Shifts in Understanding Witnessing a significant change in how we understand the universe can be unsettling, yet history teaches us that our scientific knowledge keeps evolving. Throughout time, our view of the cosmos has transformed a lot. Long ago, people thought the Earth was the center of everything, with stars and planets moving around it. This idea stuck until the 1500s when Nicholas Copernicus challenged it. He suggested a new model where Earth and other planets orbit the Sun. This big idea changed how we understood how things move in space. In the late 1600s, Isaac Newton brought in a new era of understanding. He explained how planets move using forces, especially gravity. This was a huge step forward in understanding how the universe works. Then, in the 1900s, Albert Einstein made a big impact with his theory of relativity. He showed how space and time are connected. 
Einstein said that gravity comes from heavy objects bending the fabric of space and time. Imagine a heavy object making a dip in a sheet. The heavier the object, the deeper the dip. This bend doesn't just affect objects, it also changes how light moves. When light passes near heavy things, its path bends due to the curved space-time. This bending of light, called gravitational lensing, was a key part of Einstein's theory. A famous physicist, John Wheeler, put it nicely. Matter shapes space-time, and space-time tells matter how to move. This shows how mass affects the way the universe exists, and how the universe shapes how things move within it. The way matter shapes space-time directs how things move in our vast universe. This shaping doesn't just impact matter, it affects light too. When light travels, it follows a route called a geodesic. If space-time curves, that path bends, similar to how a straight line on a flat paper curve when the paper bends. This bending of light around curved space-time by massive objects is called gravitational lensing. Before Einstein's theory, Newton thought space and time stayed the same, while events happened in the universe. Newton did predict light bending, but Einstein's idea of space-time faced doubt and needed proof to be accepted in the physics world. Gravitational lensing, seen and expected, became crucial evidence for Einstein's theory. In the early 1900s, people debated whether the Milky Way was everything or just one of many star groups. Edwin Hubble joined in by figuring out the distance to an object beyond our galaxy. His work showed that our galaxy is just a small part of a massive universe. Expanding on Einstein's theory, Hubble saw that distant galaxies were moving away from us, hinting that the universe was growing. The Hubble Space Telescope, named after Edwin Hubble but not designed by him, refined these ideas. It helps us keep exploring and studying space. In more recent years, Stephen Hawking, a respected physicist, suggested an intriguing thought. He said the universe might not be infinite but doesn't have a clear edge, similar to Earth's surface. Hawking also talked about theories on how the universe might end, adding more to our thoughts about space and what might happen in the future. The Puzzle of Matter's Discrepancies The vast and stunning cosmos holds a mysterious puzzle at its core, the S8 tension. This puzzle is about figuring out how matter is spread across the universe, and it's become a big challenge in cosmology. Despite the incredible things we see in space, we're still unsure about how matter is arranged out there, creating this puzzle known as the S8 tension. This tension comes from differences in the information we have about the way matter is spread throughout the universe. Scientists are using a groundbreaking computer simulation called Flamingo to try and solve this puzzle. Unlike earlier simulations that focused only on dark matter, Flamingo looks at regular matter and how its gravity affects everything in space. The universe's lumpy structure, which is measured by the S8 parameter, is a big challenge. Astronomers use different observations, like studying how light from faraway objects gets bent due to gravity, to measure this parameter accurately. However, there's a problem. The S8 values scientists get from different experiments don't match up. Values from studying the cosmic microwave background suggest one thing, while values from gravitational lensing studies suggest something else. This mismatch is what's known as the S8 tension. It's important to know that this issue is different from another well-known problem called the Hubble tension, which deals with differences in how fast the universe is expanding. Even with Flamingo's detailed simulations considering ordinary matter's impact, including powerful processes like galactic winds, scientists haven't solved the S8 tension. They're not sure what's causing this problem. Some ideas suggest errors in measurements, while others even think we might need to rethink our entire theory of gravity. Simulations have shown some puzzling things too. At certain observations, the universe doesn't seem as lumpy as we expected, challenging what we thought was true in our standard model. However, some measurements between different observations align perfectly, suggesting that the universe might behave differently over time. A big idea that could change our understanding of it. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.